Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so this talk will be about um, the <laughs> stacked video extension, or possibly I should have retitled it as how I tried to write a blog post about video and ended up writing uh, metadata specification extension. Um, yeah, I'm a geospatial developer at a company called Spark Geo in Canada. And the, in this talk, we'll talk about what is spatial video, how to process it um, into the system, a short introduction on stack, um, what is the stack video extension and how does that relate to stack, um, what are some, a couple of options for deploying a, uh, a video stack extension app, and uh, what are some future steps in the stack video extension. So what is uh, spatial video? What do I mean by spatial video? So often uh, spatial video is marketed as full motion video or FMV, and it can mean a few different things. Oh, my video was supposed to loop here, but I hope you saw it once. There was a, a satellite and a UAV and an airplane all taking video. Um, so there are various uh, definitions of FMV, um, but what I mean is that th this is any video in which the, both the sensor and the collected video frame might be moving through time. Um, the actual video asset data can take many forms, basically any uh, format of video, but the most common ones would be MPEG-2 transport stream, and you'll notice that it's got a TS file extension, or MOV MPEG-4. And um, so these videos have associated metadata either embedded in band, um, so the, and usually in a format that's um, byte packets of metadata that are encoded directly inside the video, and it's usually um, adhering to the MISB standard, so that's the uh, Motion Imagery Standards Board. They are the main uh, body out there that's making video metadata standards or the metadata may be delivered out of band, so in a completely separate file like a CSV. Um, yeah, so these, the metadata, it, it exists in the form of um, like packets that have a bunch of metadata attributes that correspond to a time frame, a time stamp within the video. So how do we actually do anything with this uh, spatial video and how do we deal with the metadata? Because like for most of us, when we open up a video, we just like double click it and QuickTime comes up and we watch the video. But there's a lot of embedded metadata in there. So here's an example of, of a, a full motion video. Um, so this comes off of ArcGIS.com um, and you can you can download the video yourself through the link. But you'll notice that the video here is, it's taken from a helicopter that has a sensor on the bottom that is uh, filming this truck. And as the video progresses, the sensor moves and also the, the collected frame area moves. Um, so the way that we can actually get at this metadata, um, we can use open source tools like FFmpeg or um, ImageMagick. And when we look at the information about the, the video, so in this case, um, my video file is called truck.ts, uh, you'll see at the bottom, so we've got a video stream, an audio stream, and a data stream. And often the data stream is where video subtitles go, but in this case you can also, um, you can embed uh, like a byte stream of metadata. So that third stream is, is, the, is where all of the metadata exists. And you'll notice that it's denoted KLV 
which stands for key length value, and that's um, a well-known data encoding standard so that we can actually decode those bytes into something more manageable. Um, so as an intermediate step, we can copy out that uh, the data stream into a, a standalone binary file using the command on the screen here where we uh, select the data stream. Uh, we say that we're gonna, we want to copy it and then we just give it a, a name of uh, the output file. So um, this out binary file would contain all of the binary byte stream data. We still wouldn't be able to read it as a human being. Um, but using the Python module KLV data that you can download off GitHub, uh, we can use the KLV data dot stream parser to um, read that binary file. And then finally, when we look at the metadata list within that stream parser, we can see the metadata on the right hand side. So, um, so this would be an example of a single metadata packet, and it's not even the entire thing. I think this video has like 50 or so different attributes for every, for almost every video frame in the video. So you can imagine that there's a fair amount of metadata that's actually encoded within that data uh, stream. And so some interesting attributes here for us would be like number 10 there, sensor latitude, sensor longitude, sensor true altitude, and we're gonna pull out some of that metadata um, so that we can, um, we'll store um, all of those, uh, we'll store the sensor center points, frame sensor points, frame corner points, all in external GeoJSON files. Um, and we can do that using the um, like sensor latitude, longitude, altitude, and then there's also uh, frame sensor and offset corner lat longs. So there's all of the metadata necessary so that we could make the video that played on the right hand side um, where there was a sensor sort of orbiting around the rectangular frame, uh, video frame geometry. And one thing to notice that um, when the sensor is writing those metadata packets, it's working as fast as it can, but it won't, it probably won't write as many video frames, um, as many metadata packets as it's collecting video frames. So in this case, we only, uh, the video only had 700 metadata packets, but um, there were 4,400 video frames. So if you play that without doing any sort of interpolation, um, the video will appear to like play for seven or so frames and then jump to the next location, then jump and jump. So it's like a really herky-jerky thing. But if you interpolate those, the frame corners and different geometries in between the known metadata uh, locations, you'll get a much smoother video. Um, so turning to the spatio-temporal asset catalog, if you've been in this room at all today, you've heard the introduction to Stack probably 10 times already, but so Stack is a, a metadata specification that there's a couple different um, connected specs. There's the main Stack spec that um, describes catalogs, collections, and items, and in our case, sort of like one item would describe a video or a collection of really tightly related videos as assets. And then there's also the stack API spec. Um, and yeah, so the stack spec comes with tons of different uh, item properties already defined, but through uh, custom extensions we can add additional properties, and you can actually go to GitHub and if you're given permission through the stack powers that be, uh, you can write your own extension and contribute it to the, to the repo. 
And so I've done that with the video extension. You can go to the repo here and see examples of uh, items and you can read the JSON schema spec if you really want to. But there's a bunch of new properties that are available through the um, extension. So some interesting ones are the video shape. Um, either you can do either the frame rate or the frame count and then a bunch of um, like video specific pieces of metadata that you can optionally include or not. And then for our video asset, um, inside each item you would want one or more groups of this type of, uh, of asset. So there would be one data, or, so all of this is like controlled by roles, uh, asset roles and um, one of the assets would be have a data role and the rest would have metadata role. And then there's, um, you can group them by using asset roles as well. So if, so you can connect the actual video asset with the sidecar geometry files um, using a group role. And then, so how do we actually like deploy this and show it on the web or something? Um, so the, the most simple case is that you only have one stack item, one video, and then these uh, associated geometry files. So you could just like put those in cloud storage and uh, access them directly on your map. Um, but a little more sophisticated, you could have um, a stack API that talks to your to a um, stack catalog on in like. Amazon RDS or whatever. And then a separate API that generates a uh, pre-signed or signed URL um, so that you can um, sort of control how the access works um, to your uh, assets. And then show, and then use that pre-signed URL on your map. So finally, we can create a map that looks like this. And so just by, uh, by switching out the stack ID, uh, you would be able to load the stack item and um, use the appropriate uh, frame geometries to show on your map um, and play it through time like so. so. And so what's the future of the extension? Um, I'm not like completely happy with this. Oh, this emoji didn't really turn out very well, but uh, it looked different at, at home, but it's sort of like a, a frowny face emoji. Um, so ideally you would, uh, we could handle like searching per video frame and um, find the, act the single video frame that, uh, overlaid a point, but with this extension, you wouldn't really be able to do that. You would be get you would be able to get close enough so that uh, matching videos would be returned. The problem with uh, making one stack item per video frame is that you can have thousands of video frames easily within a video. So if you're happy having like a stack catalog that's four or five thousand times bigger than uh, your original stack catalog, then go for it. Like maybe that's possible for your use case. Um, another option might be, I don't even know how this would work, but if you did a stack API extension that maybe searched for the matching videos and then was smart enough to go into the in-band metadata to find the matching uh, video frames, that could be an option, but I probably won't be the one to write that. Uh, yeah, thanks Brad Hards for all your help with the stack extension and there's some formatting going askew there, but you can reach me on Twitter at uh, DKWeens or you can, and you can also find the blog post that I was mentioning that describes almost this entire workflow um, at the link here. <laughs>